A juvenile crime is any crime committed by someone between the ages of 12 and 18. It can be anything from disorderly conduct, um, to minor possession of alcohol, to drug crimes, to assault crimes, to sexual assault, even armed robbery, rape, and even more serious charges can be charged in the juvenile court and often are. There are certain charges that will never be considered a juvenile crime. And certain things that the, the, the legislature has recently made changes to the juvenile law is to say that someone who has committed a, an offense, a, a town bylaw offense, or disturbing school assembly, which used to be a very popular charge, uh, are no longer charges that can be prosecuted in the juvenile court, or quite frankly, any court. Also, if it's a first your first offense and it's a misdemeanor that has less than six months of incarceration uh, for a penalty, then that will not be charged in the juvenile court or any court for that matter. On the other end of the spectrum, the only charge that the juvenile court cannot handle and will not handle is murder. If a juvenile is charged with murder, that charge will be transferred to the superior court. So when a juvenile gets convicted of a crime, they actually don't even call it convicted, they actually call it adjudicated. There is a type of prison that a juvenile can go to, it's called a DYS, the Department of Youth Services Detention Center. Um, it's kind of, I like to refer to it as kitty jail because it is a locked setting, but not, not anything like any prison an adult will go to. Um, they are focused on, on treatment, so they would always develop a treatment plan, which usually involves some type of counseling, um, but they are detained in a locked facility. Um, and after a period of time, they, they serve so much time, they may be released to the community on what they call a, a grant of conditional liberty, similar to an adult's version of parole. And if they are ever get in trouble again, they can be pulled back in up until their 18th birthday off that parole, that grant of conditional liberty. A very common misconception is that the juvenile record gets sealed automatically upon someone's 18th birthday. A lot of people have come to me saying, well, it doesn't really matter, my record's gonna be sealed. And that couldn't be anything further from the truth. A juvenile record, like an adult record, will stay with you and is, is always there for your entire life unless you take some action to seal it with the courts. It's less accessible than the adult record uh, for obvious reasons. They wanna keep the juvenile uh, record more private, but it is accessible by certain employers depending upon their level of access to the record. So for instance, the police are always gonna have access to the record. The court's always gonna have access to the record. Um, the federal government's always gonna have access to the record, uh, regardless of whether or not the person is now an adult. Also, certain employers with a certain, the higher level of what they call quarry or record access, they may have access to it. Schools in particular, so for instance, if you wanna go work in a public school, they may have a high enough level of access to also see a juvenile record. I've been working with juvenile cases since 2003. At that point in time, I had been a criminal defense lawyer for about five years. And that was the first day I set foot into the juvenile court. And I decided doing a lot of work in the juvenile court. I realized that, you know, this is a kid's chance to turn his life around. Many times it's gonna be a, a silly, a small charge that they get charged with, but the idea is to try and set them on the right path. Sometimes that means winning the case for them. Other times that means getting them to the proper program. I realized that kids are not beyond saving as some adults are. I've seen some adults who are really hardcore criminals in my time. Uh, most juveniles, there's still a chance to get them back on track. I understand that. I've been working juvenile courts for a long time, um, and that's why you should hire me as a juvenile defense lawyer. Like many cases, every juvenile case is different. Um, depending on the circumstances of the case, we're going to want them to uh, see a clinician, see a mental health counselor, things that are going to help them get them on track for the future. Many cases, just like an adult case, can be won on the facts and we can actually win the case for them. But at the same time, what we want them to do is to get the help they need so they don't end up back in this court again. Client communication is key. It's one of the most important aspects of our job. Uh, we try and return uh, phone calls, emails, or texts within the same day, hopefully within the same hour. Uh, if I'm not available, I have a staff that works with us who's able to jump right on the communication uh, to at least let the client know that we're looking at it and have not forgotten about them. I think what makes our law firm different from other firms is my background. I come from a blue collar background dealing with everyday normal people. I like to help those types of people get through these issues that maybe they haven't dealt with before. Uh, most of our clients haven't worked with a lawyer before and I want to make their experience very comfortable. Our firm is a smaller firm and the advantage of having a small firm working on your case is that you're always going to get to know your lawyer on a very personal basis. You're never going to be handed off to staff. 
uh, or a lawyer you don't know. We get to know our clients and almost like they're our friends and get very close to them so that they understand that they always know who's working on their case and um, they have a direct line of communication to the person who's working directly on their case. Most of the time I am handling the cases personally. If I was a lawyer, you were introduced with during the initial intake. I do have associates who do work on cases, but if I'm the one who's told you I'm gonna be working on your case and I did the intake with you, I will stick with the case throughout it. So during your consultation for a juvenile offense, typically speaking, you're coming in with your parents. Um, however, during that consultation, at many times, I'll have the parents leave the room because I'm gonna wanna speak to the juvenile directly. Uh, in every case, uh, regardless of who's paying the bill or whether or not the person is 12 years old or just before their 18th birthday, the juvenile is still the client. So I'm gonna to wanna to speak to them directly without the parent being there and also have a separate consultation with the parents also in the room. We go, just like most cases, we go through all the facts of the case. If we have any police reports or other documentation, we wanna go through that. Uh, our first strategy is to try to find a way to win the case. And if we can do that, outline that for the juvenile and, and for their parents at that time. We're gonna go through what's the best possible outcome as well as what's the worst possible outcome in the case. And we're gonna try and figure out what their goals are and try and meet those goals.